So the idea with this pot pie episode is that we want to get maximum utilization from one whole chicken. We're going to make the stock, we're going to make a big old cast iron pot pie and individual freezer pies. First we're going to break down the chicken into its elemental parts. We're going to start by removing the spine, placing a little snip at the base of the breastbone and flattening it out. Then we're going to remove the wings. We're going to place a radial cut at the base of the joint, look for the two bones, run our knife between them and separate. And of course repeat with the other side. Then we have to separate the chicken legs. There's barely any bone or cartilage between the breast and thigh, so they should be very easy to cut in between. Then we're going to start very graphically taking off everybody's skin, but do not discard it. It's got plenty of collagen to add to our stock. Then we're going to remove all the white meat from the breastbone. Simply find the breastbone and begin making shallow cuts down alongside it until you've removed the breast. Repeat with the other side and you got yourself a chicken carcass, yet another essential building block of a good stock. Then the thigh and drumstick are getting the same kind of gross skinless treatment. Ugh. To find the joint between these, we're going to look for this strip of fat. Place a cut right down the center of this and it will reveal the joint that you can run your knife in between and separate the two. Then to remove the meat from the drumstick, we're effectively just going to scrape it down the bone. Again, kind of a gross process. Be happy that I don't record audio. The thigh is a very similar story. There's a single bone that we need to cut underneath, separating the meat and again reserving all the bones for our stock. Once you have liberated the meat from their bony captors, it's time to start chopping up the meat. I'm just cutting everything into bite-sized pieces and keeping the breast meat and leg and thigh meat separate because the breast meat is going to be better for our day of pie and the dark meat is going to be better for the freezer pies. Go ahead and refrigerate these until we're ready to use them. For now, it's time to make stock. We're going to want to cut the spine and carcass down into more manageable pieces, gather everybody into a big gory pile and toss them with a little bit of neutral flavored oil like vegetable or canola. Then we're spreading them out evenly on a generously greased rack set in an aluminum foil line rimmed baking sheet and roasting at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about an hour or until deeply brown whilst we prepare our vegetables. Vegetables are where you can start to be truly creative with your stock. The absolute essentials are carrots, celery, and onion, but feel free to put your own spin on things with stuff like parsnips, which are going to add a bit of earthy sweetness. Turnips are an inoffensive root vegetable that will help complement the carrots, maybe even a little bit of woody spice. Leeks bring a very mellow but slightly more complex onion flavor, a little sweeter in the white parts and a little grassier in the green parts. Fresh lemongrass brings a lemony minty flavor to the party. You should most certainly add a whole head of garlic chopped in half widthwise, and then maybe the most optional ingredient, some fennel fronds, which are going to bring a rooty anise vibe. Lastly, a tablespoon of whole peppercorns, a few sprigs of fresh parsley, and a few sprigs of fresh thyme, and a bay leaf or two if that's your thing. And of course, our freshly roasted chicken parts, each one packed full of chicken flavor, none of which will go to waste when put to use in a stock. You could of course cover these guys with water and slow simmer for anywhere from 4 to 24 hours, but you can achieve a very close approximation with 60 minutes in a pressure cooker, which cooks its contents at a much higher temperature and extracts their precious flavors in a fraction of the time. Now we need to release the pressure and drain our stock, but first we have to make every effort to try to creep out our camera guy. I think it's working. Drain this liquid gold and you're good to go. Homemade stock is one of the essential parts of an amazing chicken pot pie. What's the most important part? That's right, the flaky buttery pastry crust. We're going to start by measuring out 150 grams of all-purpose flour, tiny whisk together with one teaspoon of kosher salt, and one stick or about 113 grams of refrigerator cold butter. The objective here is to get the butter down into pea-sized pieces. You can do this with a couple of knives, but that's kind of really annoying to do, so if you have a pastry cutter around the house, that's going to make quick work of our butter into tiny little globules of flaky making goodness. The next objective here is to add just enough ice water to make the dough come together. Together. I found that 50 grams is a good place to start, adding a tablespoon or two at a time as necessary. We're going to start by bringing things together with a rubber spatula and eventually using our hands to massage things into a barely cohesive ball of dough. Take care not to over knead, that's how you get a tough pie crust. Once it holds its shape when pressed together, we're going to wrap it tightly in plastic wrap, press into a disc, and refrigerate for at least one hour. This is both going to allow the gluten to relax and prevent the butter from melting prematurely. If you are fortunate 
enough to get a food processor for your birthday last year, this is the absolute easiest way to make a pie crust. Simply combine the same amount of flour and salt in the bowl of the food processor, affix your shredding disc, and feed a frozen stick of butter down through the feed tube. This will shred the butter into perfect little uniform uh, shreds, which will translate beautifully into nice flaky layers in your pie crust. Pour the flour and butter mixture into a large bowl, add the ice water as before, and coax into a cohesive disc of dough. Now that our pie crust is in the fridge and ready to go, it's time to configure our filling. We're going to start by melting two tablespoons of butter in a 10-inch cast iron skillet. Once nice and sizzly and foamy, we're going to add our chicken breasts. Sautéing for two to three minutes just until we get some nice color. Then we're going to fish them out and set them aside and add yet another two tablespoons of butter to the skillet. That might seem like an awful lot of butter, but we're going to need it to formulate our sauce. Into the butter goes half a chopped onion that we're going to sauté for two to three minutes before adding some aromatic vegetables. Chopped carrots, celery, and parsnips are my personal preference. We're going to sauté those over medium heat for about five minutes until they soften and just start to pick up a little bit of color. Then we're adding a tablespoon of freshly chopped thyme, sautéing for another 30 seconds or until fragrant, and then it's time to begin the thickening. To the skillet, we're going to add four tablespoons of all-purpose flour, which we're going to sauté together for about one to two minutes. This, along with all the butter, is going to make a sort of makeshift roux. Then, optionally, we're going to deglaze with a quarter cup of white wine or dry sherry. Cook that for about a minute until the alcohol smell wears off, and then it's time to start slowly adding our stock. A little splash at a time at first, mixing until a thick paste forms, we eventually want to add about two cups of our homemade stock, which is going to come together to form a thick, velvety, flavorful sauce, to which we're going to add our previously sautéed chicken and any of its accumulated juices, bringing to a simmer and letting cook for about five minutes until the chicken is cooked through. Then it's time to start the finishing process. A few generous pinches of kosher salt, some freshly ground black pepper, tasting for seasoning, adjust as necessary. Remember, you can always go forward, you can never go back. It's time to kill the heat and add a few tablespoons of freshly chopped parsley, half a cup of frozen peas, and a quarter cup of heavy cream. This way, the flavor of the peas and the parsley will stay nice and fresh, and the heavy cream will not split in the simmering skillet. Give this one last mix, taste it for seasoning, and then set it aside and keep it covered while we prepare our pie crust. First, we're going to remove our well-chilled dough from the fridge, generously dust it and our work surface with all-purpose flour, and begin to bang it out with a rolling pin, whacking repeatedly until it's about twice its original size. Then we're going to start rolling until it's around about an eighth of an inch thick, which we're going to cut into a round that we're going to place on top of our cast iron skillet pot pie. Now, this carries with it a few complications. First off, shrinkage. George Costanza was right. Shrinkage is very real, and it must be accounted for. If you just grab your pie dough and throw it on top of your filling, cut a few vents, brush the whole thing down with egg wash, and throw it in the oven, one of two things is going to happen. If you have a very moist, saucy filling, your crust is going to capsize. It will shrink and fall beneath the waves like so many sailors of yore. If you try to overcompensate and make a less saucy filling, you're going to end up with a picture-perfect, very dry pie, which is going to look very good on Instagram, but very bad on your resume. When you're forced to give a job interview in the form of a dinner party, which I'm sure has happened at least once in human history. On the other hand, you could borrow this amazing trick from the folks over at America's Test Kitchen. Their idea is to pre-cut and prevent your crust. They don't say to use heart shapes, but I am my own man. Then place your crust in the fridge for at least 30 minutes after forming to help the gluten relax so it doesn't shrink as much. Brush the whole thing down with a beaten egg. Maybe place your heart cutouts back on top in a decorative fashion. Sprinkle with flaky finishing salt and bake at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 to 15 minutes until light golden brown. Cool completely for 10 to 15 minutes on a wire rack, and then gently shuffle on top of your completed pot pie filling and bake for an additional 10 minutes at 400, until bubbly, golden brown, crisp, and absolutely beautiful. Now there's a pot pie that's as fantastic as it is photogenic. All there is left to do is grab a big old spoon and dig in. You'll find that unlike most pot pies, this crust is shatteringly crisp, set prettily atop its saucy, flavorful filling. It is, quite simply, the best chicken pot pie experience you will ever experience. But you ask, what about the dark meat? Well, I think that that responds better to being frozen. So we're going to cut it up into the same bite-sized pieces and prepare it very much the same way as the white meat filling. This time using just a little oil instead of all that butter, sautéing until we have a little bit of color, adding our aromatics, and then our stock, and letting the whole thing simmer for about 20 minutes. This way the dark meat gets a chance to braise and break down. Then to thicken, instead of the flour, we're reaching for two to three tablespoons of cornstarch, which we're going to mix with about half a cup 
cup of cold stock, otherwise the cornstarch is gonna get lumpy. Mix until completely homogenous and then slowly stream into the filling while mixing constantly so it doesn't clump up. We're gonna cook that for about three more minutes until the desired consistency is achieved, season to taste, add some parsley, and then set aside to cool. If you're making these freezer pies, you can either double up your pie crust recipe or use the scraps from the original recipe to cut your little rounds. We want these to be just a little bit larger than our intended serving vessels. I'm going with ramekins. And then we're gonna simply divvy up our filling and top with the crusts, wrap in plastic wrap and freeze for up to three months. When it comes time to reheat, we're gonna bake them at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes wrapped in foil, then unwrap, brush with a beaten egg and bake for another 20 minutes until golden brown and bubbly. So there you have it folks, chicken pie pot pie that makes use of the whole chicken, and you can taste it in every bite, whatever that means. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode, I hope you try it for yourselves, and now I have a special announcement from the BCU. What's up guys, I'm Ansel, I'm not Solo Whaley. What's up guys, I'm Andrew Ray. And I'm Solo Whaley. Thanksgiving may look a little different this year, so on November 19th, Solo and I are going live on the BCU channel to teach you how to cook up a special dinner. How special, you ask? Try one of a kind. We use Blue Moon's bright flavors to inspire a range of unique and simple dishes that will liven up any Thanksgiving <laughs> Great. We use Blue Moon's bright flavors to inspire a range of unique and simple dishes that will liven up any Thanksgiving dinner. And we want you to cook along with us. Tune in, it's going to be fun. Who knows? You just might learn a thing or two.